Hey guys, so happy Easter. It is uh, actually Easter Sunday when I'm recording this. Stepped out for a walk. It's really nice weather and you probably can tell I've been a little sick here uh, the last week. Thankfully, um, it's starting to feel a little bit better. So getting out, getting some fresh air and stuff. But I was thinking about as I was actually uh, walking here. And of course, you can see I'm uh, actually in a cemetery right now. And I could of course make a make a movie reference about uh how important it is sometimes to spend a little time in cemeteries brings brings life into perspective and that's very true and i was thinking about a lot of different things of course you think about a lot when you're laid up sick and having to uh wait to get better so to speak but uh even as i was thinking about a whole bunch of different things god brought to mind actually the walk to emmaus and I'm gonna actually read a few verses here. And this has been, like I said, I'm, I'm chewing on this one here uh, this afternoon. This from Luke chapter 24. And uh, let's see here, starting with verse 13. And behold, two of them, that's uh, two disciples of Jesus, two of them went that same day, this is on that first resurrection day, that first Easter Sunday, that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about threescore furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. Remember that. Think about that there in verse 16. We'll come back to that. Verse 17, And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad. And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering, said unto him, Art thou on... <coughs> Excuse me. Coffin doesn't quite go away uh, very quickly, unfortunately. Um, verse 18, though. Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty indeed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when they found not his body, they came, saying, They had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them, which were with us, went to the sepulcher, and found it even so, as the women had said, but him they saw not. And he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things, and to enter into his glory? Beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village, whither they went. So that's Emmaus they're getting near to. And he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it, and brake and gave to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. Remember that in verse 31 as well. And they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the 11 gathered together and them that were with him saying, the Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way and how he was known of them in breaking of bread. And you probably saw the, the corner of my New Testament there. But a couple things that I've been thinking about that are really interesting to me in regards of that. that like I said, I'm just kind of thinking about and chewing on here this afternoon. One, those two disciples, Cleopas and we're not sure the other one's name from the context it might have been. Um, although actually, no, that wasn't Simon. But Cleopas and whoever the other disciple was. They, <coughs> excuse me, they had a head knowledge of Jesus. They clearly knew who Jesus was. They considered him to be a prophet. They considered him to be a teacher. 
But yet they didn't know that he was standing right there with him or with them. They didn't know Jesus. They knew about Jesus. They'd walked with Jesus. They were following Jesus. They were following what he said to do even, you could say. But they didn't know Jesus. And the thing is, there's a direct spiritual application here because they weren't saved until they knew Jesus. That's the difference. There's so many in this world that know about Jesus. They may be sitting in church every time the doors are open. They may know the Bible front to back. They may know all about how to look the part of a Christian, how to do it right, say the right things, not say the right things, and so forth. But do they know Jesus? Are they born again, to use Jesus' own words for describing being spiritually made new? And then notice that uh, there were two parts I said to recognize. First, their eyes weren't opened yet, and then all of a sudden they were. And specifically for them, it was in the breaking of bread. But their eyes were opened. God opened their eyes to say, hey, this is my son. This is the one. This is the Messiah. And all of a sudden they knew. And notice what happened. Immediately, they ran back. This is a day's journey. They bolted back to Jerusalem, proclaiming they now knew Jesus. They knew the truth. So why do I, why do I say that? Why do I bring that up? Again, of course, this being one part of the Easter story. The reason why I bring that up is really to ask the question, are you saved? And what I mean by that isn't just to be using another churchy sounding word. I mean that in all honesty. Each of us has to know Jesus has to be spiritually made new. And this story reiterates once again what the Bible makes clear from cover to cover. That being spiritually made new, being saved, being born again, is something that the Holy Spirit does in us. It's not an action that we do. All we do is submit. All we do is surrender when God convicts us through the Holy Spirit. That's the difference. That's the difference between that head knowledge. Again, there's so many, so many in this world that they admit Jesus walked the earth. They admit he was a good teacher. They admit he had good things to say, all of that. Well, guess what? I don't say this to scare you, but even the demons admit that Jesus is real. Admitting Jesus is or was real is not enough. Submitting to him, surrendering to him, saying that he is Lord, submitting our will to God's will, being spiritual and made new, that's the difference. So something to think about, something to chew on. As uh, I've heard one preacher say when he closes some videos and messages sometimes, think on these things. And that's true. Think on it. The Bible spiritually discerned. Be praying. Be seeking God. And if you are saved, again, that echo of what I call the, the third greatest commandment, the great commission, or the first and second greatest commandments, love God with all our heart, love our neighbor as ourself, or love God with every part of us, I should say. Love our neighbor as ourself, and then tell others the truth. Tell as God leads. Go everywhere proclaiming the truth as God leads us. Some things to think about on this Easter, this Resurrection Sunday. Hope it's been a good one for you. A few things, like I said, to think on. And like I said, I've been sick here uh, the last week, so a little quieter on the channel, but I'm excited about some of the ideas that are in the works. So definitely uh, keep an eye out for what we've got. But again, think on this. From the end of the book of Luke, a reminder from the road to Emmaus that all of us have to know Jesus.